Hello and welcome back to the Single Malt Review and welcome back, like it or not, to Japan. Mm. We have got more Japanese whiskies and as often the case, it is Dave's fault. So I'll let <laughs> Dave take this one away. He's got the deets. Mm. What have we got this time? Well, it's safe to say that here at Single Malt Review we are no strangers to controversy. There was a time we said unkind things about mellow corn and upset some people. There was a time we said unkind things about old monk rum and upset a lot of people. Oh, they're still they're upset yeah. every day. We take those calls, we mm. receive those. Oh boy. Today, it's a little different. Today's controversy comes not from our zesty hot takes, but from the whiskey itself. We are looking at what has turned out to be quite a contentious distillery uh, in the rich and varied lore and history of Japanese whiskey. So, I'm going to refer to my notes and even cite my sources... Uh, so yeah, what we're looking at today comes from the Kuriyoshi Distillery, which is owned by Matsui Shuzo. Now Matsui had been making shoju, the um, you know, iconic Japanese rice spirit, in their distillery um, since 1910. They've also had a license for distilling whiskey since 2015, and in fact been distilling their own spirits since 2017. Now the reason the controversy comes up is they have been selling but it's ostensibly Japanese single malt whiskey at age statements up to 18, 20, all sorts, for a very long time. In short, they have been selling what has been marketed as Japanese whiskey for much longer than they've had the means to make it, in fact, on their premises. What I gather is that it is, in fact, mostly been imported, possibly revatted and matured, then rebottled whiskey from elsewhere uh, Scotland, Canada, USA. Take your pick. There has been excellent coverage of this sort of thing. I can refer to articles by Hanako Montgomery writing on vice.com back in March 2021, so just a few months ago. Or also uh, excellent coverage by a chap known as Whiskey Richard on the site nomunication.jp, which specializes in Japanese um, alcohol and spirits industries. In fact, this is part of the impetus behind the new Japanese whiskey regulations, which we talked about previously, which mm. specify... Ruined it for everybody. <laughs> ...country origin. So it turns out for most of uh, history, what was sold as Japanese whiskey in general, or well over 90% of it, was in fact not whiskey at all. It was, uh, or not Japanese in particular, it was imported and relabeled or revatted and matured. In fact, it wasn't even until the 1960s, the late 60s in fact, that what was sold as whiskey in Japan had to actually contain whiskey. It could be anything even just relabeled shoju. <sighs> and um, uh, yeah, it turns out yeah. that Matsui Shuzo have been particularly infamous within Japanese whiskey connoisseurship circles for essentially obfuscating the origin of their whiskey. They never ever said it was actually distilled in Japan, because that would have been illegal. Yeah, it would be mislabeled. But it was uh, heavily marketed and implied to be a Japanese spirit. Now that's all started to change, of course, with the advent of... Matsui Shuzo owning their own stills, and the Kuriyoshi Distillery is now producing malt spirit. So, my understanding is that the malt itself is mostly imported. There'd be a lot of Scottish malt brought over because there's simply not enough in Japan. And that on itself, not mm. a problem. Um, that, that's, that's not part of the edicts, as far as I understand yeah. it. In fact, I mean, most, um, most Scotch whiskey is made from English, shameful English <laughs> barley, so that, that's not, a, that's not a, too much of a sticking mm. point. Uh, as to where you get your malt from. Um, as, and for my part, I can um, I can contribute that they have these um, lovely Japanese brushwork. Mm. I think we've got a they are woodcuts, from mostly from the nineteenth yeah. century. Yeah, we've got a nice Mount Fuji here, presumably mm. with some with some cranes. And that the back of the bottle tells you absolutely nothing of worth mm. whatsoever, except that the um, the mm. alcohol by volume, which is uh, rather healthy, forty eight percent, and it tells you which way to turn the cap to open <laughs> it. So I guess. Um, no expense spared on mm. that one. But as I've just discovered, these are indeed unchill filtered because yeah. that's because a right old froth on that one. Very promising. So this, uh, the um, most recent releases from Kuriyoshi Distillery are these Matsui range, which I believe are being marketed as pure malt Japanese whiskey. So as far as we can tell, all spirit from the two Kuriyoshi distilleries, which are in the city of Kuriyoshi, coastal spot, in uh, Totori Prefecture, near Mount Daisen, one of Japan's tallest peaks yeah. and source of abundant mineral water. Yeah. That's a Honshu, country's largest island. Now, I must say, all the, uh, the, the dubiousness, the skepticism, debate, this is mostly coming from sources of uh, Japanese whiskey connoisseurship and also just the general history of Japanese spirit. I'm 
but not screwed up. Everything I've imparted to you here is second-hand knowledge. It's come from sources and articles online. Um, in particular, those two I cited, so no communication, and also Vice magazine. Mm. I have no personal knowledge of any of the controversy in history. It's only what I've read from others. So, that's a very long and roundabout way of saying what we're trying here is quite likely to be um, yeah, Kuroyoshi's own pure mobbed Japanese mm-hmm. spirit made from And if that's mobbed. the case, it's mm. going to be extremely Extremely young. young. So Possibly 18 months is a speculation, maybe two years. Mm-hmm. And what we're trying here is the Mizunara cask. Mizunara is Japanese white oak, and it's kind of taking off in whiskey circles. Yeah, it's become very popular. Mm. I think that probably the most um, oh, forward-facing is the um, 15-year-old blend from Shivers, mm. um, which I hear is doing perfectly well for itself. comes in a very fashionable box. Um, I think we've covered that. If we haven't, we probably should. I, I think it's pretty. It's a it's a pleasant fifteen year old as opposed to a blow your nuts off fifteen year old. Mm-hmm. But um, it's you know it's shivers. It's not out there to go and cause um, cause a ruckus in mm-hmm. the um, in the whiskey world. So um, yeah, probably on brand. But this one, I've I've noticed this one, and I cannot mm-hmm. stop smelling lemon cheesecake. Mm-hmm. It's not like to be exclusively Mizunara cask. I mm. believe bourbon is the majority cask used at yeah. Yoshi. I'd say um, un, un, um, coloured is the mm. safe bet for this yep. one because it's very, very, very subtly mm. um, coloured. So probably not particularly fresh. And if it either, is yeah. all um, yeah, Matsui's own casks, sorry, own spirit, then yeah, this is practically new make. Mm. Uh, but now this one, really, really sweet lemon citrus on it. Mm. And as that hits the vanilla, I cannot, I cannot stop getting lemon cheesecake energy. Yeah, I just got It's full of sherbet and mmm. There's a uh, the oakiness is restrained. It's not just straight up wood. It's you it's for a young gentle too. Mm. Um, it's gentle for a forty eight percent because that's that's actually pretty strong. Um, you can normally nose things coming at forty six. Mm. This one, mmm. I probably wouldn't call it a. 40%, but I probably would call it 43. So yeah, it's pretty stealth strength going yeah. on in here. And this one, um, you think this one's probably the, this is the highly regarded of the three, this right? This is, is the famous um, one. Yep. Kind of equally controversial whiskey critic Jim Murray mm-hmm. rated this as the best Japanese whiskey mm-hmm. of 2020. Okay. Oh, well, I'll take that with the usual um, grain of Murray brand salt. Mm. But, um, so, because we, we're going to taste two others as well. And um, so, I guess we're starting with, well, this is both the most conventional, which is why yeah. we're starting with it, but also possibly starting at the top of the heap mm. um, in terms of uh, quality. So, we'll just have to see how we go. Yeah. But, yeah, no, it's squarely in the lemon cheesecake spectrum mm. um, and, and pretty jolly gentle as well. Ooh. Ooh, that's an interesting mix of very active wood, some really young spirit watering on new make but a lot of flavor too yeah less gentle mm. you have to say on the palate wow yeah um it's bringing some heat that's mm. also some spice i'm getting as well as that lemoniness there's a lot of white pepper this is well prickly yeah you know mm. i i think i think we we are on um eventuality a here i think mm. this probably is straight up japanese whiskey and i yeah. think it is as young as it would have to be mm. because this is this is barely a whiskey. Yeah. There is so much new make <laughs> mm. in here. Um, this is incredible. Yeah. Let me see if that. I'll say for all the controversy I've already detailed, possibly in exhaustive detail. Um, I think the impression is that this is the uh, the Matsui label is Kuriyoshi moving towards more, I guess, truth and advertising. Well, I mean, they, they have to now. After they... all, but there's the they also produce the Totally label named after the prefecture of their Bathausen, which is. Uh, upfront about being a world whiskey, it's a blend of Japanese and international whiskey, as other Japanese distillers are doing with their international blends. There's also you can still buy the Kuriyoshi labeled whiskey, which is um, fairly blatantly, obviously older imported age statement whiskey that's been either relabeled or revatted in Japan. Mm. And yeah. so the labeling is distinct. So being that label is Vamatsui, it is, as far as we know, a um, pure malt Japanese. This is young. Like I, I mm. like this. This is good. This is this yeah. is, this has a super vibrant energy. Mm. This is crazy young. This yeah. is, but it doesn't have that blinding, um, I guess, industrial chemical heat you get of other new make or very young spirits. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. This is 
like this this is this is young like I don't think we've tried mm. before. I think if you bottled this in Scotland you'd get your ass kicked out of the Highlands. Yeah, yeah. Well, this so is, this is, it would if it is as young as we believe, then yeah, it, it falls well short of what would legally be classified as whiskey by Japanese law. This is this is bold and is what I think putting this out is. I think the new Japanese whiskey regulations even specify three years plus. So, but this predates, I thought they did too. This, pre- so, this predates those regulations uh, okay. by a significant margin. I bought this um, oh, some time ago, I think late 2020 or so thereabouts. This, this, may was, be, this may be a bit of a relic here. Yeah. Um, this may have to go... Oh, definitely. Yeah. Well, this, this brand may have to sort of go back mm. to sleep for another <laughs> year and a half and then re-emerge um, in order to be legally mm. sold as, as Japanese whiskey. So we may have gotten... You know, jumped on the last yeah. sort of the last legal bottle of this one. <laughs> Hell, uh, um, even you know, Nika had been updating all their labeling even before the change of his regulations to say, by the way, this does not meet the current industry standard for Japanese whiskey. Yeah. Other still, as I mentioned, are relabeling any of it's got a national component as world whiskey, which is commendable. Um, but even then, Nika, we were quite surprised to learn, is still occasionally effectively top dressed. Yeah. With I mean, that, that was the whole never the, the, Cos- yeah. the Cosmo. Was pretty open about that, mm. I think, from memory. But um, so you know, oh, still... the Cosmo is yeah, definitely always been an international blend. Yeah. But learning that Nika is in fact their single malt um, Yoichi, I believe it was, mm. contains Ben Nevis sometimes. Mm. Mm. That too will probably have to change. Do I see. Yeah. I'm sure. Well, now that the now that the secret is out, but mm. uh, God, I wonder how much of this was. I never thought. I mean, how much of um, Ben Nevis whiskey went went mm. in such a way because Ben Nevis doesn't have a huge following, you know, buying straight up Ben Nevis, and mm. it's such a weird whiskey it barely goes into blend. Um, I wonder if that's a, a product like a like a downscaling that's going to have to happen at the uh, mm. at the Fort William Distillery. I don't know, but we shall see. Uh, this it's better with water. Yeah. It's still crazy young, but it's I kind of respect um, I kind of respect the the balls on it because mm. it's. It's not a remotely unpleasant. It is. Um, it, it wears its youth on its sleeve and just mm. kind of has fun with it. It's just nothing but bouncy, fruity citrus. The yeah. wood is a very, very light touch. Uh, it is easy to see why Mizunara is catching on internationally mm. as a novel and quite expressive wood for aging whiskey. Um, it's like I said. It, it is. Barely a whiskey, so it's not mm. going to get a particularly high mm-hmm. score, but it's one of the I promise. Um, I think Jim Murray or otherwise, if you called this um, the best whiskey in Japan, you have, you have lost your mind. Um, <laughs> I don't think that's, that's, that should not be up for debate, mm. but um, it is interesting. Um, yeah. It is very much a... I was just talking about how I wish there were some whiskeys I could go back and taste the new make just to see what the absolute spirit character is, and this is the absolute spirit mm. character. There is um, there is really nothing but the distillery here, and I think it is a pretty promising start um, to mm. what will what will hopefully be um, a more stable, um, more regulated, and mm-hmm. eventually uh, hopefully age stated um, Japanese uh, Japanese release. And hopefully, with all the bad blood that they have put in the water, it might be a bit cheaper than some of the others mm. as well, because the um, as anybody in the market will know, getting you know hold of uh, Nico or Suntory brand um, Japanese malts uh, is a pretty expensive exercise to undertake. So um, any any uh, more of this would be helpful. So it scores it's going to be a seventy eight from mm. me. Um, which considering that this is this seems like it's been barely gone in the barrel. They've run mm. it in one end and out the other. Um, it is like it is a, a parody of a mature whiskey. Mm. That's actually not too bad, um, because you know, run of the mill, new make spirit that would probably be hitting the hitting the fifty needle really. Mm-hmm. Um, most most uh, new make spirits. So this one I think is, is punching pretty hard mm. considering considering the age on it, which is just microscopic in a way that I don't think we've ever encountered. I don't. Mm. Given that most of what we try is Scotch, we're sort of. We know that it's at least three years old, no matter what we're yeah. drinking, even the cheapest blend. <laughs> um, so to have something that's you know, almost half that, half that maybe, potentially, depending on when this went in the bottle, is um, kind of exciting. Mm. Um, but it's not whiskey. <laughs> don't don't go crazy here. What, what do you think? Ah, yeah. oh, this is it is very tasty. I can see why it has caught the eye, despite big contention around its uh, producer. But at the same time, too, there is. 
I wish we just knew more about it with certainty. Or has it been top dressed with older Japanese whiskey or other, other spirits? I think we'd know if it had been. But would no. we, though? Because there's a lot of flavour there. It, was, it yeah. is just hard to say. Like, even the um, English language labelling here still doesn't guarantee it's actually distilled in Japan. It's made in Japan, sure. But yeah. um, I think we'll brewery, you just mm. have, to, have to do a bit of research on the what the label looks like mm. post-regulations yeah. and see if they've ratified anything there because it is just, you know, the information mm. is scant. And I went on the website and that website information is scant mm. and also broken. <laughs> um, that was an unnavigable disaster mm. of a website, so don't bother with that. That aside, yeah. it does rate an 80 from me just yeah. for the sheer, yeah, the it is, it is vigor not and the bad flavor. Stuff. Power. Not bad yeah. stuff at all. And um, it only it gets weirder from here. Mm. Um, we have a Peter offering, and we have a Sakura cast. Yes, the Japanese, um, Japanese cherry. cherry. Mm. So that I cannot wait to mm. find out. Okay then. All right. Well, that was um, the Matsuri Miz. I always say this one. Mizunara. I always call mm. it um, Mizunara for some reason. Um, from where do you say they were? They are uh, Kuriyoshi yeah. Distillery. Mm. Yeah, Kuriyoshi Distillery. Mm. But that place really sucks. Hmm? Cultural value. Oh, Dyson. Oh, God. Yes. But there's no bags. 